funeral of late minister in the presidency, Jackson Tembu, is going to be held in his hometown in Mpumalanga today. President Cyril Maposa has accorded him Tembu an official Category 1 funeral. The minister sadly passing away on Thursday from COVID-19 related complications. He was 62 years old. ENCA's Tula Sizwe uh, Simalani joining us now uh, live from Emalekhleni. Tula Sizwe, uh, good morning to you. We'll also be uh, speaking to uh, Sipaman Legorge outside his home, uh, his family home in just a few moments from now. But as we continue to build up to 9 o'clock this morning, uh, questions uh, are going to be asked about the official program. And for those who've been tweeting us, uh, asking when the president is going to speak, I understand that's going to be at half past 10 this morning. You're absolutely right, Gareth. In terms of the program, the program is scheduled to really get underway in earnest around 9 o'clock um, in terms of the uh, funeral program here at the Millennium Hall, uh, which is situated not far from the Sacred Heart uh, Catholic Church here in Akaville. Emalathini, the president, due to deliver the official eulogy at about 10.30 uh, in terms of the program. What with the situation as it is, people, uh, the build-up continues. As you know, Gareth, the name Mpumalanga, uh, the name of the province, means the place where the sun rises. And usually around this time, it's a province known for spectacular sunrises, uh, sunrises and you know, normally you'd have a beautiful sunrise by this time. Well, at least the glow of the sun uh, as the sun uh, comes up and starts to warm up the land. But I mean, on a day like this, it is apt that it would be overcast. It is overcast in Akaville and Whitbank. It is, uh, it is overcast in the hearts of many a South African, not only over the loss of Jackson and Tembu, but also many other people that we have lost. The sun rises here, but the sun has set uh, on one of Mpumalanga's favorite sons, uh, Jackson Mtembu, and therefore we gather here uh, to bid farewell to Jackson Mtembu. Many people making their way on the N4 highway. And as you and I talk, uh, Gareth, and reflect on the life of Jackson Mtembu, you can't see the N4 highway from where we are in the heart of Akaville, but I can tell you that's one of the legacy projects um, that can be attributed in part to the late Jackson Mtembu. He was the MEC uh, of transport, public, public works, roads and transport towards the completion of what was known as the Maputo Development Corridor, which entailed developing the N4 highway uh, through tolling a public-private partnership uh, that stretches all the way from here across the border, uh, the Libombo border into Maputo, including a stretch of some 50 kilometers of road on the side uh, of uh, Mozambique towards Maputo. But that's one of the many legacies that you and I will be talking about as we build up to uh, nine, nine o'clock and the start in earnest of the funeral service of the late Jackson Mtembu. Sipaman Koke is stationed at the moment outside the Mtembu home and we heard Sipaman in the last few days Michael Mtembu stepping up at a time when it's really difficult for the family to come to terms with the magnitude of uh, this loss that they have suffered, that South Africa has suffered. What is he telling you this morning about how the family is coping in the last hours uh, as we build up to the final burial and, and re putting Jackson Mtembu at his final resting place? Well, it's an emotional time for the family. In a few hours' time from now, they will lay to rest one of their own, their own blood. I mean, since the news broke that Jackson Mtembu was no more, tributes have been coming in, messages of condolences. The family was very emotional. I mean, I think a few days ago we were unable to get them to pay tribute to their own because they were very emotional. But yesterday they were able to reflect on Jackson Mtembo. His brother Michael is a very busy man this morning. He joins me now. Babun Velase, thank you very much for your time. It's a very emotional time for you. You are sending your brother to rest this morning as a family. Surely this is devastating. How do you feel, even though that is a very unfair question to ask? Uh, as, a, as a family, uh, we we really devastated, uh, but uh, we have come to a point whereby we've realized that uh, we have to let our brother go. He has fought his fight, 
he fought this battle and uh, at this juncture in actual fact we are lost of words but uh, we are encouraged uh, of the support that we got from all corners of South Africa, uh, be it the community, the media, the government, his party, the People's Party, that is the ANC, the condolences that we receive from all corners of South Africa. We were given uh, hope and strength by this support. How are things going to unfold this morning in terms of the program? When do you expect to officially start here? I understand that there will be a prayer here at home. Yes, what's, what's going to happen is uh, here at home today at 8 o'clock the ANC will come and hand over the ANC flag to Jackson's wife. That, uh, that will happen at 8 o'clock. Then from there, at uh, quarter past 8, all the family members that are in the list will leave from here to the, to the hall where the service is going to take place. The service is going to start at uh, 9 o'clock. So the family, all the members of the family will go to the hall to be screened at quarter past eight to observe all the necessary protocols. Then from there they will sit down. Six members of the family, including in the six, is the wife of the late is also included, will then come in together with the president. Let's talk about the brutality of this disease that has claimed your brother's life. You were unable to have a night vigil. You won't be able to see his body. Surely that must be more devastating than anything, that you are unable to pay your last respects to him in what many people would describe as a normal way. Yes, in a normal way, we would have wished to do it in that fashion. But uh, as we all know, the coronavirus is, is a dangerous virus. So, and to make matters worse, Jackson was the face of government in this uh, fight against the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. So, uh, because he was the face of government, uh, we have to follow the protocol as it is stated in the regulation so whether we want it to be done our way at this juncture that cannot happen and the family understands that reflect on jackson as a brother many south africans have reflected on his life his political activism and his positions in the anc and in government but as a brother how would you remember him uh, as I've said during the course of the week, uh, for me personally, uh, I've lost in such a way that I cannot even explain the loss that I've, I'm ex I've experienced. But uh, luckily, when he was still alive, there are so many things that he taught me. He used to say to me, uh, you should be able, if I'm no more around you, to be able to stand on your own. This is what he taught me. And uh, I took that. So that is one of the things that gives me strength to say he's no more, but his way to me was you should be able to stand on your own if I'm no more next to you. So that keeps me going and it gives me real courage.
So will his uh, coffin be passing through here for a short period of time before making its way to the church and at the hall? Yes, we've requested uh, the government that uh, as, 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 as uh, uh, black people, we have certain rituals that we also need to perform. But those rituals will be performed under the strict guidance of the coronavirus uh, uh, protocols. So what's going to happen, the, yes, his body will come here, but it will not leave the house. It will be in the house. Our elder, my uncle, will then do what is supposed to be done according to our culture. Then from there it will proceed to, to, to the hall. Strength to you and your family. Thank you very much for your time, my brother. Let us release you. All right, Sipa Manlegoge, thank you very much uh, indeed to you. Tula Suizwe Simalani, let me just come back uh, to you for a moment uh, as well. We've uh, just been hearing from the family that uh, the hearse will then make its way to uh, your location as well. Social distancing, uh, Tula Suizwe, I think we're coming back to you for the moment, uh, is going to change the way that uh, this funeral uh, is going to be conducted. It's not at all uh, what would be expected, uh, not just in uh, the Mtembu family's culture, but also what we would expect to see uh, at a funeral. Just give us a, a sense then as to what was so important to the late Jackson Mtembu that all these protocols are observed. Everything's different, isn't it? Without a doubt, uh, Gareth, many people talking about it. In fact, as I was listening there to Michael Mtembu reflecting on his brother, his late brother, one of the things he said uh, in the past few days was how after Jackson Mtembu had been admitted to hospital, one of the key messages that he sent was to say to him, for this coronavirus is deadly serious, uh, mask up, wash your hands, and social distance, even when he was in hospital, uh, insisting that people should adhere to that, uh, to those protocols. So as one of the people who were at the forefront uh, of leading the national coronavirus response and basically the key messaging, because he was a communicator, wasn't he? Uh, a communicator par excellence uh, was Jackson Mtembu. Even now, that should show in the way that this funeral is conducted. So strict protocols we are told will be uh, adhered to uh, as people start to gather uh, in front of the Millennium Hall, which is next to the Sacred Heart um, Catholic Church. We are starting to see people starting to arrive here. 50 people is the maximum number of people that will be here. It's kind of, dif kind of difficult uh, to pull off Gareth, given the span of this man's life. This is a man who, you know, if you trace his history and involvement with South African society, you can associate him with the 1976 student activism, trade unionism in terms of the municipal, uh, the metal uh, and allied workers union, which later became NUMSA. Codessa negotiations, he was there, working with the likes of the late Albertina Sisulu. Those are some of the people you associate with Jackson M. Tembu in the UDF all the way, but we are restricted to just 50 people under strict protocols. Uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa set to deliver the eulogy around 10.30. One of his children, um, Tulim Tembu, will deliver a message uh, on behalf of the children. And you can only imagine how difficult, how devastated the family must be and how she will be trying to keep herself composed while remembering and paying tribute to her father. A few moments ago, I saw uh, the late Jackson Mtembu's spokesperson, Nongavam Shauli. She tells me she's barely able to compose herself as it is. Everyone understanding that they need to be stoic and come out here and attest to a life well lived. There'll be no embellishment, really, uh, Gareth. No need to embellish anything. His works speak for themselves. His principles stand for themselves. And there are many works to speak of as well, Tula Sizwe and Sipamanda, and I'm sure we'll speak about those uh, when we come back to you later in the morning. Uh, the family prayer expected to uh, get underway at 8 o'clock this morning. I'm sure we'll go back to Sipamanda for that and the official program getting underway uh, at 9 o'clock this morning, live here on DSTV 403, uh, and also we'll be live streaming on enca.com. To both Tula